Jason Brodsky is policy director at the non-profit advocacy group United Against Nuclear Iran, has been closely monitoring reaction from these major players. He says it, it's extraordinary that Ukraine has not yet severed diplomatic relations uh, with Iran. Um, and we can talk about that momentarily. Uh, firstly, at this point, what do we know about what transpired and who was behind these strikes? It's great to be with you, Becky. I think that uh, what we can say is that this was a precise surgical operation by a foreign power who has great capabilities of evading Iranian air defenses. And uh, it also sends a message that uh, the likely uh, uh, power who was behind it, Israel, has the ability to not only concentrate on domestic matters, it's, con it's focused on a domestic debate over uh, judicial reform and also ongoing tensions with the Palestinians, but it is at the same time keeping an eye on Iran and its destabilizing activity. And it fits into an Israeli doctrine, the octopus doctrine, aiming for the head of the octopus not merely its tentacles, the proxies and partners. Jason, why now? If it is a, an attack, a kinetic action by Israel, um, and we can't stand that up here at CNN, but that seems to be the received wisdom, why now? Well, I think, uh, as I mentioned, there had to be intelligence of uh, the need to disrupt uh, an Iranian uh, operation or uh, advancement in its capabilities. I think that Esfahan is a very sensitive location for the Islamic Republic's establishment. It's the center of defense industrial uh, production and its missile program, its drone program, and its nuclear program. I think that uh, the evidence in the public space indicates that this may have been focused on Iran's missile program. Uh, there's a lot of production of the Shahab-3 uh, missile, which can reach Israel uh, in Isfahan. And uh, there also may have been a hypersonic element, uh, according to Israeli media, uh, in, in that uh, location, uh, which was a Ministry of Defense facility uh, in Isfahan. So uh, these are all plausible explanations. Jason, I wonder about the timing, um, given that the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, is in Jerusalem today. And, of course, this was a, a, you know, a prearranged um, a prearranged visit. I mean, he's now calling for calm, of course, because of what has happened, transpired, the deadly violence over the weekend or in the last few days between the Israelis and Palestinians. But I'm wondering, you say that there, there, there had to have been intelligence. Might it also have been that, for example, the visit of the US Secretary of State at a time when the new prime minister and the right-wing government has put Iran squarely back in the crosshairs of this right-wing Israeli government. Um, the, the, the timing, certainly some would suggest, does seem to be convenient. Well, I think that uh, there is a secondary message there. And uh, let's, uh, let's remember, uh, Israel does have a history of undertaking uh, activity on Iranian soil, uh, coinciding with the visits of high-level U.S. officials in April 2021. Uh, then uh, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin was in Israel, and we had the uh, strike, on, the, the uh, explosion at Natan's uh, nuclear facility. So I think that this could be a message uh, that uh, Israel is sending not only to the United States, but to the world. Uh, and it also comes after, let's remember, uh, Israel and the United States had uh, a, one of the most significant military exercises ever Juniper Oak exercise. Uh, so I think this was a message of strength and that Israel is prepared to defend its interests uh, irrespective of uh, the political winds at the time. And, and there is some talk amongst the, the um, experts on, on, on Iran, on, on, on Israel um, and on this region about how this may be useful in Tel Aviv helping to shape U.S. policy towards Tehran. What do you make of that narrative? I do. I think it is very useful. I think that Israel is uh, increasing deterrence and sending a message to the Islamic Republic that it's not going to be able to advance its missile program and other uh, military uh, uh, capabilities uh, without cost. And uh, that uh, at a time when the United States is focused on Ukraine and China, does uh, help and send the message that uh, the uh, West's eye is not off the ball with respect to the Islamic Republic. Jason, back to the attack itself. Was there significant damage done? State TV certainly showing what they say is, is a, a factory back in operation now. 
Well, I think the Israelis say it was a phenomenal success. The Iranians have a history of uh, downplaying such strikes, and so we can't take what they say uh, with uh, seriously on its face. Uh, so uh, I think that we have to wait for satellite imagery to come out uh, in the days uh, ahead. Uh, but uh, let's understand that Iran also has an interest in downplaying what happened because it avoids pressure to have to retaliate uh, against uh, Israel. But it does have options to retaliate against Israel. It could do it in the maritime sector, it could advance its nuclear program, and it can also target U.S. troops in response for an Israeli strike. We've seen that before. Uh, the Islamic Republic implement that uh, modus operandi. So uh, these are all contingencies to watch. Jason Brodsky, um, with uh, his insight and analysis uh, tonight for you folks. Jason, thank you. Well, still